It is a very sick man who would abuse and then murder a baby. Two juries have said Raymond John Carroll murdered 17-month-old Deirdre Kennedy near Brisbane 33 years ago. But Mr Carroll is not now in jail and he never will be. Tonight, Raymond Carroll publicly defends himself. When you first come face to face Carol, with a man you, you oh, believe you. to be a murderer... Thank you. Please. It's difficult to know just how to react. I shook his hand and then immediately <coughs> regretted it. Friday the 13th of April 1973, sometime during that night, this 17 month old baby, Deirdre Kennedy, was abducted from a cot in Ipswich and the baby was taken down to Limestone Park in Ipswich Terrible things were done to the baby, including biting the thighs of the child. The body was, the baby was sexually interfered with, and then the body was thrown up on the roof of the lavatory in the park. A horrendous crime, isn't it? It is a horrendous crime, yes. Horrendous. It definitely Can you is. imagine anything worse? No, I couldn't. Did you do it? No, I did not. Two juries say you did. Two juries said I did, three, co three courts of appeal said I didn't. Twelve men and women, wise and true, twice said you did. Yes, I'll agree to that. They did convict me. How is it that such a man could agree to such an interview that so obviously was going to be, uh, well, robust? Well, there was a proviso, and it was that we agreed to do a lie detector test with him that he believed would prove his innocence. Now, lie detectors are in some quarters seen to be just plain rubbish, but we thought it was a small price to pay for the opportunity to gain an insight into the mind of a man who has been twice convicted for murdering a baby. Just raise your arms up a little bit for us. The test, so called, was conducted by Australian Polygraph Services. Carol was wired to machines monitoring his breathing, blood pressure and perspiration and then asked a series of questions. Some easy. Do you live in Queensland? Yes. Some not so. Did you kill Deidre Kennedy? No, I did not. With his wife Marilyn there for support, Carol is thrice married, he was I questioned for just it. over an hour. Yes. Then the results scored. The score that I got for Raymond Carroll of plus seven was a conclusive result. That is, he is telling the truth. Are you being paid for this interview? No, I am not. In any way or form? In no way and form am I being paid for this. Deirdre Kennedy's tiny body was found on the roof of this Ipswich public toilet. She had been beaten, sexually assaulted. Short Street. 50 metres down on the left-hand side, the flat where baby Deirdre was abducted. And see that car just going by now? That's Quarry Lane down there where Carol lived. Immediately opposite, Limestone Park, where the body was found. The whole crime scene within a 200 metre square. I did what I thought was right at the time. Put my children to bed and as far as I knew they were safe. As you might imagine, the Kennedy family has suffered immensely. For the first 12 years, it was a murder case without a clue as to who did it. After we lost Deirdre, I guess I could have walked off the side of the earth. I, was, I just felt so beaten. I'd lost my baby. We tried to get on with our life as best we could until that day we got a phone call to say that they had picked this person up. And we, we had no idea of what we were in for after that.
Raymond Carroll had been picked up and was later convicted of a strange break and enter at the women's quarters of the Amberley Raff base not that far away. It was the chance association in a policeman's mind between bizarre aspects of this break-in and bizarre aspects of the unsolved Kennedy murder 12 years earlier that was Raymond Carroll's initial undoing. Why could you break an enter? Um, <clears throat> in what way, what exactly do you want? Richard? Well, what happened? What did you do? You did it. Well, I'm sorry. The Crown says you did it. The state says you did it. Back in those days, a boundary fence ran along here, and on the night of the break and enter, the police noted Carol's car parked outside. But it was a special kind of break and enter, because the intruder went up one of those drain pipes and into the women's quarters upstairs. There, whilst the woman slept, he pilfered photographs of her she had at her bedhead. He then gathered women's underwear and RAF uniforms, possibly here, and brought them into this ironing room. Here, he destroyed the underwear and defaced the photograph. Carol's prints are on the photograph. How did your fingerprints come to be on the photograph uh, if you didn't do it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. It wasn't just, you know, an ordinary break and enter, kid going through a window and stealing a television or something, was it? I mean, this is getting the the underwear of women and cutting the crutch out of them and cutting the nipple section off the bras. Yes. It's... That was the crime. It perverted? Yes. Most importantly, it was this event in uh, 1982 that drew you to the attention of the police who were investigating the murder of the baby back in 73. That's correct. What had associated the break-in with the Kennedy murder was that the Kennedy baby had been dressed up in women's underwear before its abuse and murder. Suddenly, a cold case was red hot and Carol was charged with murder. What did Deirdre Kennedy die from? Come on, you must no. remember. I'm assuming asphyxiation. Yes, asphyxiation and strangulation. 17 month old baby, that size. 17 month old, yes, I know it is a very, truly horrendous crime. I'm fully aware of that. The body of the baby, whether it was alive or dead, was bitten. Yes, there was a bite mark present on the child. Two. Debatable. Bitten by a person, experts say, who had a strange set of teeth. True. That's what they been called out in the court case. You've got a strange set of teeth, haven't you? Yes, I have an unusual dentition. Describe the uh, unusual nature of your teeth, please. I have an overbite. Which means the, the bottom... The bottom, behind the, front. the front and the top teeth do not meet. In fact, you can't do that? No, I cannot. And the experts say the bites on the baby match the uh, strange set of teeth you've got. That's the evidence they gave, yes. Yeah, it's hard to keep calm in this circumstance, Mr Carroll. The evidence does not add up. Right. Bite marks are supposed to be so unique. Okay. The bite marks are so unique they're compared to fingerprints. Now a fingerprint can belong to one person, one person only. If my dentition is so unique and matches that bite mark so perfectly, how is it that in the second trial the prosecution has come up and said, sorry, but the first trial we had it wrong. His teeth were upside down in the first trial. So basically, the first trial I was convicted of incorrect evidence. 
the baby did not have deep bruises. There was a width between the upper and lower marks. That indicates to me, says the expert, that the biter's top and bottom teeth cannot close together when his jaw is shut. That's you. That's not just me. Am I the only person with an overbite in this world? Carol was found guilty of murder. The dental evidence may have been decisive, but to be fair to him, other eminent dental experts later gave completely contradictory evidence. When you heard the guilty verdict, was that, well, not celebration, but I mean, did you feel the... He was off the street, he was away. He wouldn't do it again. Then came the appeal. Mm, that's when it all went bad. That's when it went bad. After nine months in jail, Carol won an appeal. The dental evidence was unsafe and he was free. And it was like the bottom just fell out of your world. And I wondered sometimes whether we'd have been bit off never knowing. What did, who did this? You can't explain the pain and the hurt that you, that you feel, the loss. It's just, it's wrong. All along, Carol had insisted he couldn't have committed the murder because he wasn't in Ipswich on the night in question, as they say. As a 17-year-old RAF recruit, he claims he was in Adelaide doing basic training and preparing for his graduation parade. On Friday the 13th of April, 1973, you were in Edinburgh, South Australia. Yes. A lot of people say you weren't. Let's count them. Recruit Sager says you weren't there. Recruit Sheehan says you weren't there. Inspector Martin says you weren't there. Recruit Franklin says you weren't there. Recruit Flynn says you weren't there. And Recruit uh, Godland says you weren't there. How am I going? Yeah, you're doing well. That's what came out through the court system, yes. They're all lying, you're telling the truth. They believe what they believe. I, I believe what I know. That's not what I asked you. They're all lying and you're telling the truth? Yes. If you want an outright answer, yes, they are. Explain the amazing coincidence that you uh, didn't appear in the graduation photograph from uh, the RAF base in South Australia. Yes, I, I did not appear in the graduation photograph. And the reason why? The reason why is I either asked or was asked to be off the parade. Why? I do not know. The exact reason for that, I cannot tell you. The course after the graduation march marched off the parade straight into a staging area for photographs. The photograph was taken. No, I do not appear in that photograph. Because if you did... If I did, I wouldn't be here because this would be all circumspect, wouldn't it? It would be physical proof to say that I was in Edinburgh. If I was in Edinburgh at the time, I couldn't be in Ipswich at the time. But he was in Ipswich, according to Carol's girlfriend of the day, Desley Hall. Well, she asserts, black and blue, that the night after the murder, you called on her. That now, if she says that, is she lying? Yes. And you're telling the truth? Yes. Sager, she and Martin, Franklin, Flynn, Goddard, and now Desley Hall. They're all liars, you're telling the truth? That's correct. Having beaten the murder rap, when new evidence came up, Carol couldn't be charged again. That would have been double jeopardy. And this is where the prosecution got smart, possibly even too smart. They then charged him with perjury, claiming that at his first trial, he had lied when he said he didn't do the murder. A lawyer's trick? Anyway, again, a jury found him guilty Again, he won on appeal, and then the High Court itself ruled in his favour on this double jeopardy principle. Well, Mr Vasta, are you convinced that he did it? Yes, I am. Angelo Vasta was the judge at Carroll's first trial. He says the High Court got it wrong when it upheld the legal principle of double jeopardy. 
a person acquitted of a crime cannot be retried for the same offence. The issue is, uh, did he kill the child or did he not? And uh, it didn't take long for two separate and distinct um, groups of 12 good men and true, or good uh, citizens and true, taken at random from the community to say that he did it. You had a child by your first wife. Yes, I did. And that first wife says that you propose that that child be called Deirdre. That's her allegation, yes. She's lying? Yes. Your first wife also says of this child that three or four times she can recall you changing the baby's nappy behind locked doors, hearing the child scream, and then when you eventually emerged from the room with the child, the child had bruises over it and you wouldn't talk about it. Is it true that she said that? It is true she made those allegations, yes. And is she lying there too? Yes. You're telling the truth? Yes. How many are we up to now that are liars and you're not? I'm not keeping count. It's the coincidence though, isn't it? It's of 11 people in a row lying and you 11 times telling the truth. That's what's strange. That's what's strange, but like I said, if you put it that way in a generalised fashion, yes, it is very strange. But if you sit there and go through all the evidence that is produced to dispute their allegations, mm -hmm. it does not make sense. Mr Carroll, do you think it's possible, I mean this is 33 years ago, do you think it's possible that over the last 33 years you have been able to convince yourself, convince yourself that you didn't do it? No. In her book, Justice in Jeopardy, Debbie Marshall finds Deirdre's killer a psychopathic pedophile with tendencies to fetishism. If Carol is the killer, then pedophile or not, he's protected by the double jeopardy rule. Faye Kennedy is now campaigning to have that rule changed. If I could change this law for one other family, I've done some good. It just seems so wrong that and this can go on, you know. Who else has suffered like I have because of a law? Very few people have suffered as much as you have, Faye. And I just feel driven to do this. I just feel driven. And I believe I will get this result that I'm looking for. I believe that with all my heart that the people of Queensland will support me. I need them to, and I have faith that they will. I do. I wasn't gonna cry today. I feel extremely sorry for Mrs Kennedy for her loss. I honestly hope she does get closure for this crime, but I'm sorry she is not going to get it at my expense because I did not do it. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.